Buongiorno, siamo lieti in salutarvi e darvi il benvenuto qui a San Pablo, entro le mura di Roma, in questa calda domenica di luglio. Vi chiediamo per favore di avere in mano il bollettino bilingue inglese e italiano per poter seguire e soprattutto per poter partecipare vivamente in questa Santa Eucaristia. Per chi desidera il sermone in italiano e anche in spagnolo lo trovate all'ingresso sul tavolino. Vi chiediamo per favore di prendere visione anche dei fogli in allegato al bollettino. Lì troverete tutte le attività della nostra comunità, di questa nostra famiglia di San Paolo. Vi invitiamo anche a partecipare alla Santa Comunione recandosi fino qua per ricevere il pane e il vino. Se vuoi una benedizione basta incrociare le braccia. Anche vuoi partecipare alla comunione con il pane senza glutine basta alzare la mano. Di nuovo, benvenuti a San Paolo, entro le mura di Roma, e buona celebrazione! Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Within the Walls. Actually, a very warm welcome, so to speak. We're glad that you are here. The service is in English and Italian. If someone you notice needs a copy of the sermon in either Spanish or Italian, they are at the back. Uh, there will be some brief instructions at the time of communion. I would call to your attention the two sheets with the announcements in order to keep the time short and get you back out into the cool. Um, I'd ask you to read these so we'll minimize the announcements. Welcome and please stand for the first hymn.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of the God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go do all that you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. 
and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. The reading of the psalm. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. My faithful faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will keep my love for him forever and my covenant will stand firm for him. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my judgments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their iniquities with the lash. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. Dalla lettera di Paolo agli Efesini. Ricordatevi che un tempo voi, stranieri di nascita, chiamati incirconcisi da quelli che si dicono circoncisi, perché tali sono nella carne per mano d'uomo, voi, dico, ricordatevi che in quel tempo eravate senza Cristo, esclusi dalla cittadinanza di Israele ed estranei ai patti della promessa, senza speranza e senza Dio nel mondo. Ma ora, in Cristo Gesù, voi che allora eravate lontani siete stati avvicinati mediante il sangue di Cristo. Lui, infatti, è la nostra pace. Lui, che dei due popoli ne ha fatto uno solo e ha abbattuto il muro di separazione, abolendo nel suo corpo terreno la causa dell'inimicizia, la legge fatta di comandamenti in forma di precetti, per creare in se stesso dei due un, sol, un solo uomo nuovo, facendo la pace, e per riconciliarli tutti e due con Dio in un corpo unico mediante la croce, sulla quale fece morire l'inimicizia. Con la sua venuta ha annunciato la pace a voi che eravate lontani e la pace a quelli che erano vicini, perché per mezzo di Lui abbiamo gli uni e gli altri accesso al Padre in un medesimo spirito. 
Così dunque non siete più né stranieri né ospiti, ma siete concittadini dei santi e membri della famiglia di Dio. Siete stati edificati sul fondamento degli apostoli e dei profeti, essendo Cristo Gesù stesso la pietra angolare sulla quale l'edificio intero, ben collegato insieme, si va innalzando per essere un Tempio Santo nel Signore. In Lui voi pure entrate a far parte dell'edificio che ha da servire come dimora a Dio per mezzo dello Spirito. Parola del Signore. Il Santo Vangelo di Nostro Signore Gesù Cristo secondo Marco. Gloria a te, Cristo Signore. Gli Apostoli si riunirono attorno a Gesù e gli riferirono tutto quello che avevano fatto e insegnato. Ed egli disse loro, venitevene ora in disparti, è un luogo solitario e riposatevi un poco. Infatti era tanta la gente che andava e veniva che essi non avevano neppure il tempo di mangiare. 
Partirono dunque con la barca per andare in un luogo solitario, in disparti. Molti li videro partire e le riconobbero. E da tutte le città accorsero a piedi e giunsero la prima di loro. Come egli fu sbarcato, vide una grande folla e ne ebbe compassione perché erano come pecore che non hanno pastore e si mise a insegnare loro molte cose passate all'altra riva vennero a Genezaret e scesero a terra come furono sbarcati subito la gente riconosciutolo corse per tutto il paese e cominciarono a portare i malati sui lettucci dovunque si sentiva dire che egli si trovasse dovunque egli giungeva in villaggi, città o campagne portavano gli infermi nelle piazze e lo pregavano che li lasciasse toccare almeno il lembo della sua veste e tutti quelli che lo toccavano erano guariti The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, in the villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. How many here are type A? Work hard, accomplished, get a lot done, productive, success driven? It certainly tends to be the American way. Admittedly, life in Italy and other Euro European countries is a bit more rational, with time to savor meals and less pressure on the clock, more vacation, more emphasis on time with family and friends, time around the table. But very many of us, myself included, push ourselves to get things done, to complete the lists, to be productive or successful or whatever. In our gospel today, Jesus has the apostles gathered around him and they emphasized to him, they actually probably complained about all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Notice that he said, come away. He invited them, he took them. He didn't say, go away and do this. He didn't give counsel and advice. He modeled for them and led them. Of course, the rest of the reading today tells us 
that the people continued to follow him and went where he was and interrupted their respite. But it does say that they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. So they must have had some period of time away. Jesus practiced what he preached. He got away and took time for rest and time for prayer. Read the gospel stories and be reminded how often the gospels say that Jesus retired to a deserted place and prayed, that he spent a night in communion with God, that he went into the desert for prayer and fasting. Intentionally and particularly at crucial times in his life, he regularly found, or rather made, time for prayer, especially prior to crucial decisions and major events in his life. And he taught his disciples that and modeled it. We have similar messages in the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah tells us, by waiting and by calm you shall be saved, in quiet and trust your strength lies. Psalm 4, verse 8, that's included in our service of Compline, our nighttime prayers, says, I lie down in peace that once I fall asleep, for only you, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And we have examples in the great saints throughout the ages who taught us about prayer and meditation. Teresa of Avila, Francis of Assisi, St. John of the Cross. Likely many of you have read their works, which are very instructional for us. I commend them to you. We are in the early days of summer vacation here in Italy. I must confess that when I first started coming to Italy multiple decades ago, I found the idea of so much time off a little unusual. It's not the American psyche or habit. I remember my friend Anna Maria, who was born and raised on the island of Capri long before it was the popular tourist destination that it is today. I remember her saying, everything closes in August. She's a doctor and professor at the University of Naples, and I asked, what do you mean everything closes? Who takes care of stuff, of things that happen? Who sees patients in the emergency room? She said, nothing is open, no one is here, everyone is gone. Having lived here a good bit now, including being in Rome during August twice, coming up on the third time, I understand and agree and am convinced this is a good practice. You all are about to begin your summer vacations, many, if not most of you. And there are here some visitors who are undoubtedly on their vacation doing just that, taking their time for rest and relaxation, vacationing in Rome and Italy. We have to recharge our bodies, not just our physical bodies, but also our minds and our souls. It's key to our life, to a healthy life. We need somewhere between six and eight hours of rest per night. We can't go all the time. We need downtime, vacation, rejuvenation. Just like our bodies, our minds and our souls need that downtime, that period of rest, relaxation, and recharging. According to a Greek legend in ancient Athens, a man noticed the great storyteller Aesop playing childish games with some little boys. The man laughed and jeered at Aesop, asking him why he wasted his time in such frivolous activity. Aesop responded by picking up a bow, loosening its string and laying it on the ground. Then he said to the critical Athenian, now answer the riddle if you can. Tell us what the unstrung bow implies. The man looked at it for several moments, but had no idea what point Aesop was trying to make. Aesop explained, if you keep a bow always bent, it will break eventually. But if you let it go slack, it will be more fit for use when you want it. People are also like that. That's why we all need to take time to rest. In today's scripture, Jesus prescribed time off for his wearied disciples after they had returned from a prolonged period of ministry. And in the Old Testament, God set a pattern for us when he rested from all his work. 
When I was at my medical practice, I used to close the door of my office during the lunch hour to create a few minutes of quiet time and to rest and to read Noonday Prayer, part of our daily office in the Book of Common Prayer. It was such a refreshing practice. The staff knew that if I had the door closed, they could interrupt me, especially if there was a phone call from the emergency department, perhaps a patient with a heart attack or some other critical or important situation. But they also knew that if it wasn't really important and could wait, to hold it for just a few minutes. It didn't take long, but that five to 10 minutes made a huge difference. After that recharge, I was in a better mood and could more adeptly handle the stress of the afternoon. Life as an invasive cardiologist was a bit high stress. There are lots of ways to do that. The British have afternoon tea, a time to stop and relax. At the further end of the spectrum is Spanish siesta. But whatever the form, whether it's short or long, we need to, we must stop and refresh our bodies and minds and souls. The concept is modeled for us in the first book of the Bible. Remember the creation story in Genesis that God rested on the seventh day? But there's one other concept. When we rest, when we vacation, when we take time off, we are not just resting, we are also sharpening our saws physically and figuratively. You may be totally resting or reading a book or exercising or swimming or running or walking or visiting ruins or studying historic sites, but you're likely doing something to profit from your time off as well. There's a story that one man challenged another to an all-day wood chopping contest. The challenger worked very hard, stopping only for a brief lunch break. The other man had a leisurely lunch and took several breaks during the day. At the end of the day, the challenger was surprised and annoyed to find that the other fellow had chopped, had chopped substantially more wood than he had. I don't get it, he said. Every time I check, you were taking a rest yet you chopped more wood than I did. But you didn't notice, said the winning woodsman, that I was sharpening my ax when I sat down to rest. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Good counsel for all of us. Enjoy your holidays, perhaps sharpen your saw, and don't forget to occasionally say hello to God while you're gone. You might just find God there listening and helping you sharpen your saw. Amen. Please stand for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world.
You have made us in your image. Open our eyes to see your image in those with whom we worship, work, and live. Increase our desire for you and your ways. In your mercy, O oh God, draw each other closer to your heart. Eleviamo davanti a te il corpo di Cristo, i nostri vescovi, sacerdoti e diaconi, affinché possano guidarci fedelmente nella nostra chiamata ad essere una luce per il mondo. Nella tua misericordia, O oh Dio, avvicina ciascuno di noi al tuo cuore. We lift before you the leaders of our nations, the presidents and ministers, the parliaments, courts, and local authorities. May they always reflect your justice and strive for peace throughout the world among nations and neighbors. In your mercy, O oh God. Draw each of us closer to your heart. Eleviamo davanti a te tutti coloro che soffrono nel corpo, nella mente o nello spirito e coloro che lottano con se stessi o con situazioni difficili. Infondi loro il tuo potere di guarigione e spingici a raggiungerli con compassione. Nella tua misericordia, O oh Dio, avvicina ciascuno di noi al tuo cuore. We lift before you those who are dying and those who mourn. Receive the dying into your eternal embrace, especially for Simona accompanied by choirs of angels and greeted by the host of heaven. In your mercy, O oh God, draw each of us closer to your heart. heart. Preghiamo per la transizione. Concedici uno spirito di fede e coraggio affinché possiamo avere la forza di affrontare i giorni a venire con fermezza e pazienza. Guarda con benevolezza questa famiglia parrocchiale e manda il tuo santo spirito per guidare il comitato di ricerca la sagrestia e l'intera comunità di St. Paul's within the walls, ad essere di un solo cuore e di una sola mente, affinché possiamo ricevere un pastore fedele che si prenderà cura di noi per il tuo popolo e preparaci per il nostro ministero a Roma. Nella tua misericordia, oh Dio, avvicina ciascuno di noi al tuo cuore. Oh God, who would fold both heaven and earth in a single piece, let, Let the design of thy great love redeem the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give, give peace to thy church, church peace, peace among the nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts. Through thy, thy Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. Please be seated. 
Good morning and welcome again to St. Paul's Within the Walls. We are very glad to have you here. Thank you for suffering through the heat. There is coffee and refreshments in the garden following the service. And also there's a group that goes down to the Quirinale Hotel just a half a block away for lunch following the service. It's one of the best deals in Rome. I think it's a two course lunch for 15 euros. It's worth doing. There'll be a group that will gather in the garden and head there afterwards. I would also call to your attention that at 12 o'clock there is a service in Spanish, Latino service, which includes a wedding, which is where we have these beautiful flowers here today as well. Oops as well as downstairs, the crypt is decorated. There's a spectacular meal going on. So if you're so inclined, we'd love to have you for that as well. As we come to the, the other, only other announcements are in the bulletin. Um, it's kind of a quiet time, so there's not really anything else to announce, no meetings or anything that I'm aware of. The office will be closed the last two weeks of August. As we come to the time of communion, I would remind you that this is not our table, but God's table. All are welcome at the time of communion. Please come forward. If you don't receive communion for whatever reason, come forward anyway and cross your arms to indicate that you would like a blessing. We have gluten-free hosts available should you need that. And if there's anyone for whom it's easier to take communion at your seat, if you just let us know, very happy to bring communion to you at your seat. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice for God. Please stand. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness with this bread to offer which earth has given to human hands made, or become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness have this wine. 
fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that we come for us, the cup. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and to death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial, the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All the this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say in our own languages, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Andate in pace per amare e servire il Signore. Rendiamo grazie a Dio. Thanks be to God. Good Sunday.